here are the top 40 Windows Command Prompt commands you need to know. And we're gonna do this in 10 minutes. So first, let's launch our Windows Command Prompt. Either hit Windows key S or click the Start menu icon and search for CMD. Right click that and put that sucker into beast mode. Run as administrator. Here's our playground. Let's go. What's your computer's IP address? We can find out with IP config. Bam, all your IP information right there. But not everything. Where's your MAC address? Where's your DNS server? For that, we need IP config forward slash all. This will give us all the goodies. Now that's way too much information. We gotta filter it. And we can do it with this command. Same command as before, IP config forward slash all. This time we'll do a pipe and type in find str or find string. And we'll tell it what we're looking for. Maybe we wanna see DNS and that's all we wanna see. And that's all we get, love it. And by the way, you can use find string on any command. It's awesome. Maybe your computer needs a new IP address. We could do that with IP config and we'll first do release to let it go. And then we'll type in renew reaching out to our DHCP server and getting a fresh new IP address. Keeping in mind that will refresh every single interface on your computer. If you don't wanna do that, then specify the interface just after your command. Now DNS can be a problem. In fact, it's always DNS. It's never in the network. Remember that. So let's troubleshoot DNS. First, let's see what your computer knows. IP config forward slash display. DNS, basically all the websites it knows about and their IP addresses. But when you're troubleshooting DNS, that's kind of hard to read. It'd be great if we could just copy that to our clipboard and look at it somewhere else. We can with this command. This command's awesome, by the way. So same command as before, IP config forward slash display DNS, but right after that, we'll do a pipe and then simply type in clip. This command will copy the output of that command to your clipboard. So you can fire up your favorite notepad application and paste that sucker right in there. That's powerful, I love that. Now never ever forget to flush. And also sometimes you might wanna flush your DNS. IP config forward slash flush DNS. This will delete your DNS resolver cache on your computer, removing any old stale DNS entries. Take that DNS, it's always your fault. Oh and by the way, have you hacked the YouTube algorithm today? Let's make sure you do hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. You gotta hack YouTube today, ethically, of course. Now to troubleshoot DNS even further, you may wanna use NS Lookup. With NS Lookup, we can do things like, hey, where is networkchuck.com? What's his IP address? And it will tell you what DNS server you're using and what answer it gave you. If you wanna try another DNS server real quick, you can do that. NS Lookup, networkchuck.com, and then right after, specify that other DNS server. Let's say Google. And we got a second opinion. You can also check for other types of DNS records from MX to TXT to pointers. Trust me, you're gonna need those commands because it's always DNS. It's always DNS. Always DNS. Now look at your screen. It's messy. Go clean your screen. Don't be a slob. And we can do that with one command. CLS, clean your screen. Is that, what's it stand for? I don't know. It cleans your screen, do that. Hey, what's your MAC address? Give it to me right now. Sorry, you were too slow, but you wouldn't have been if you used this command. Get Mac forward slash V, bam, there it is right there, all your MAC addresses. This command will see if you have any energy or power issues with your computer. Power CFG forward slash energy. Give it a minute, it'll give you some awesome stuff, a great report on how you're doing. Also, how's your battery? With power CFG forward slash battery report, it will report to you what's going on. <laughs> Just copy that file location, paste it into your command prompt, bam, there it is, battery report. It'll tell you if your battery sucks. Mine's okay, I think. I'm not sure. This next one is super handy. It's A-S-S-O-C, -S you thought I was done. Hit enter, and it's gonna show you which file types are associated with which programs. So for example, MP4 files will open with Windows Media Player. But honestly, I prefer to use VLC. So with one command, actually with that same command, we can specify the file type and have that equal the program we wanna use. Bam. Now, hey, is your computer haunted? Is it going kinda slow? Does it suck? Don't throw it away just yet. Calm down, buddy. Let's check a few things. Let's make sure it's okay. With the command chkdsk, check disk, it can check on a few things. Let's see if you need a repair. With the forward slash f, it will actually go through your disk and see if there's any errors and fix them. You may want to try a dash r. This will actually check for physical sector issues and fix them. Keeping in mind, this might need a reboot, a restart, and it could take a bit, especially if your computer is actually haunted. Is it haunted? Now, if that doesn't work and your computer's still scaring the crap out of you, then try this one, sfc, the system file checker. It'll check your system files, including things like Windows DLL files, and replace them and fix them if they're bad. So do a forward slash scan now to make magic happen. Now, if your computer is really, really haunted and you're still having some issues, you'll need this command, DISM, Deployment Image Servicing and Management. It's a command line tool that will actually fix your system image. You'll wanna start with a quick checkup, check the health, and maybe go a bit deeper with a longer scan with the option Scan Health, and if it does come up with some scary issues, let's go ahead and restore your health. Man, I wish our health was that easy. You know, it actually is. Coffee, it does it. 
So after you've run the DISM commands, go ahead and go back and do the SFC commands once more. SFC scan now, and you should be good. And those commands should remove the hauntedness of your computer. <laughs> it shouldn't be scary anymore. And it'll prevent you from having to reinstall Windows. Now don't you hate it when someone takes a bad USB and plugs it into your computer and Rick rolls you? To stop this, we'll need two things. First, task list. We gotta find the task on our system, the process that's doing something. Task list will list all of our tasks and using the find string thing we learned earlier, we'll find what we're looking for. I'll search for script. There it is. Now taking that process ID, I can then use task kill to kill that task. With task kill forward slash F to force it forward slash PID to specify the PID and it's terminated. Now if you thought IP config was cool, meet his older brother, net sh. Much like me and my younger brother Cameron, the older brother is much cooler and more powerful and smarter and better in every way. Like this command right here, wlan show wlan report. This will give you a super fancy wireless report about your wireless. <laughs> so if we open that file by copying that file right there, pasting it here, hitting enter, a gorgeous report on your wireless situation. And look at that, it even has some commands in here. What the heck? That's cool. We could honestly spend all day with that SH because he's so cool by doing things like interface, show interface, showing you your interfaces. We can do quick one-liners to find our IP addresses. Bam, there they are. DNS servers, bam, kind of, there they are. Wasn't as easy as I thought. And even cooler and crazier is you can turn off the Windows Defender firewall with one command. Bam, turned off. But don't worry, the big brother's always a good guy. He can turn it right back on. So if you wanna avoid that, getting hacked, then check out the sponsor of this video, Bitdefender, and their premium security. Bitdefender keeps your computer safe even when Windows Defender can't. Like, check this out. On this computer running Bitdefender, notice I can't make any changes to my firewall settings. It says it's being managed by Bitdefender Firewall. If I try to run that same command I just showed you, which is the same command hackers will use to disable things, let's try to turn it off. It tells me okay, but it didn't do anything. Bitdefender has your back. They even tell you, hey, you're safe, and we all need someone to tell us we're safe. And it's not just firewall. They've got online threat prevention, which will actually block online threats. And they're constantly scanning your system for vulnerabilities, and they do some ransomware remediation in case you do get some ransomware when you fall for that phishing attack. Hey, it happens. And they have your back with privacy too, from a safe pay, VPN, password managers, anti-tracker. They actually block web trackers from tracking you and profiling you. And also, do you ever wonder if like your webcam is still on or someone's listening to you? Well, you don't have to wonder about that anymore. Bitdefender will check that constantly and make sure it only turns on when you want it to turn on. Now I know what you're thinking. Bitdefender is gonna slow my computer down. I want speed, I get that. And they get that too. So they have different profiles for when you're working, watching a movie, playing a game, or you're dangerously surfing public Wi-Fi. <laughs> Whatever the case, they'll adjust your system to help you do what you gotta do. And if you don't wanna worry about it, they'll switch auto magically for you. So check the link below. You'll get Bitdefender premium security for $64.98. It's a whole year, saving you $95 off the full price. And you can use it on 10 devices, from iOS, Android, Mac, and especially Windows. Y you need it on Windows. Now is networkchuck.coffee up right now? Let's find out. Let's ping networkchuck.coffee. Cool, we're getting a response. Ping is what we can use to make sure servers and websites are up, but it only told us four times. What if we want to sit there and watch it just ping it over and over and over again? We can do that with ping-t, a continuous ping. It'll never stop, it'll keep going, which is super helpful for when you're just troubleshooting stuff. If you want to see if the road to your favorite website is a bit bumpy, try out Tracert, Tracert, which is Windows' dumb version of saying trace route. This will actually trace the path to your favorite website along each router it takes to get there and tell you if that sucker's up or how long it's taking to go to that guy. Maybe that guy's slow, it'll tell you. It can be slow, so to speed it up just a little bit, do tracert-d to not resolve domain names. A little bit faster. Netstat is probably my favorite thing on Windows. It'll tell you what's connected to you and what you're connecting to. It'll also tell you what ports you have open, which is kind of important. Netstat-af. Like right now, I've got these three popular ports open. Quiz, what are those four? Comment down below. And they're open on every single IP address on my system, every interface. And I'm listening. I'm waiting for connections. Netstat can also show you the process ID for all your connections, the dash O switch. So if there is anything dangerous connecting to you, you can drop that PID, delete it with task kill. And you can also get some sweet, sweet Netstats with Netstat, dash E, dash T, five, giving you some sent receive statistics every five seconds. This one is for the network geeks, route, Print. This will show the routes your computer will take to get to certain networks, what gateways it will use. It's the routing table of your computer. So, hey, here's your default route right here. And with that same command, 
we can also add routes to our computer, route add, allowing us to customize the way our computer reaches certain networks. So here I'm trying to get to the 192.168.40 network through this gateway. If I print the route again, there it is. And then with route delete, it goes away. That's super handy when you're playing with Docker containers on a local VM and you want to route to certain networks. It's, it's really cool. And finally, my favorite command of all time. I cannot believe I didn't know about this. Shut down. Just like this. Actually, no, not just like this. Obviously, that command will shut down your computer, but with a few more switches. And by a few, I mean a lot. This will restart our computer and restart it into the system BIOS without you touching a dang thing. No more spamming F12, F11, F10, no. Just this command and it reboots into your BIOS so you can change your memory profile, so you can enable virtualization. How cool is that? So thanks for watching. Thanks for having some coffee with me. And I'll catch you guys next time. And don't forget to subscribe and do all that stuff. Like, like the video.